Hey folks, welcome back to Road Hard Restorations. If you've been following along with this 318 build, in this video we're going to be getting it up on the engine run stand, firing it up. Alright, so we're taking a break from the Mustang for this afternoon. Uh, I need some more floor space, so I have this engine sitting here and I have an engine run stand sitting here taking up floor space so I might as well combine them and if I'm going to combine them might as well get it running and do a video on it. Right, so here's the engine run stand I built a couple years ago. Let me clean it up a little bit but uh, eventually I'll get it taken apart and powder coated but for now I'm still trying to make sure everything's going to work right. Um, I had a 289 running on this thing before and um, let me show you what, uh, what I got going here. Starting way over here I have this old Stuart Warner motor minder. Uh, this was in a box of my dad's uh, junk, so thank you, Dad, for that uh, awesome vacuum gauge. Um, this is a brand new tack. I actually just bought it yesterday to replace the one that I had in here. I had the exact same gauge in here before, um, but uh, for the duct tape drags, I wanted a tack in the Mustang, so I robbed it out of here and put it in the Mustang. So uh, I just bought another one to fit that fits the hole that I already had here. I have a set of three gauges here. I don't remember if I pulled these out of a car or if this is something else that dad had in a box of junk. I do not remember. It could have came out of one of my Mustangs years and years ago. And then we have three switches here. This one's kind of cool. Uh, this one right here is actually for the little electric uh, hallway clackety fuel pump here. So that runs the fuel pump. So that's my little safety on there just because I had that. Might as well stick it on there. This one right here runs the electric fan. And then this one right here is the ignition off, on, and start. It's a momentary toggle up. So I can just turn the ignition on like that. And then if I need to fire it, push it, it'll run the starter. This actually feeds a relay, which feeds the starter solenoid. And I found this switch in a box. I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool. I can just use that. I mean, otherwise you can you know, just have a push button start or a little key ignition switch, but uh, yeah, nice and simple. So uh, I'm gonna go on a little rant here about uh, my relays and the relay plugs and how people install their relays. Um, I'm not talking about wiring, um, organization, or anything like that. I'm just talking about the actual relay sockets themselves. I see a lot of people run the relays, like this one right here has a provision for a metal bracket. Some relays have a plastic bracket built into it that you just screw directly to your panel or whatever you're working with. And then you have individual leads like this that you plug into the bottom and they, they just kind of hang down. Then if you need to change your relay, you have to unplug all four or five uh, of your leads and then take a screw out and then you can change the relay. Well, this is just a socket that already mounts. They actually interlock together, which is pretty cool. They are made in USA, good quality. I think it's uh, this brand is Hella, H-E-L-L-A. I'll get you the, uh, uh, the part number here momentarily. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you're troubleshooting or just need to switch out a relay, you just unplug it and plug the new one in. You don't have to mess with any wires. You know, it's like after you get them all four of them off, there you're like, okay, well, which one's which now? And you have to sit there and fiddle with it and figure it out. You know, they may mount this on the other side, so it may not be the right orientation or whatever. So, you know, just use these. Don't get those other style. I don't know why people do that. Anyway, you do whatever you want. Got a bunch of parts here ready to go in the car once I finally get some paint on it. Um, so we're going to need the pulleys, we're going to need the flywheel, clutch assemblies in there. There we go. Put the board down first so I don't pinch my fingers when I set it down. Okay, before I put the uh, pilot bushing in, I want to make sure it fits onto the end of the transmission input shaft and it's perfect. All right, you just slide this uh, pilot bushing in there and drive it all the way in. So line that up. Go nice tool with a flat surface and you can use a socket or whatever you have but I have these so all right then they're nice and flush got it sitting out here on the wooden block so that way the uh, the teeth don't dig into the concrete and make sure that your surface is nice and uh, smooth and clean so that way it sits flush against the crank you want to check the crank as well 
Make sure there's no burrs or anything goofy going on, nothing stuck to it. You usually feel something if there's anything there. And then hoist it up. Okay. Now these are indexed, so they only go on one way. Just kind of look at it and see, nope, that's only got one lined up there. Nope, one's not lined up. Hey, whoa, that is seems ready. I am going to move this, put this underneath because it slips. Now you can trial and error like that. You can also kind of look and see, okay, these two are really close together. So you find the two that are really close together, like these two right here, and then turn it that way and see if they line up. I think that might do it. So then I take one bolt, kind of run it down by hand. Gotta keep it from falling off. And then you can check the rest of them, make sure that they're all gonna go in. So what I like to do now, now that I got that top one started, a little bit of Loctite. Now a little dab will do it. You don't need to put a whole bunch. Pull these off. I'm gonna go ahead and stick the clutch on here now while I got it out of the car before I put it together. So what we want to do is clean the surface. It's all dusty and I just put some fingerprints on there. So, so. use the brake fluid for brake cleaner and clean that off. So the gunk on there. It's time to get the clutch on here. If you've never done one before, the usually kit usually comes with uh, one of these index tools. And a lot of times they're labeled flywheel side. So basically just set this in here and it goes on there like that. So I already washed down the flywheel with some brake cleaner. I also uh, hit the brake cleaner on the pressure plate side and then uh, we'll go ahead and get this on here so these bolts are special they have a shoulder on there which indexes the pressure plate to the flywheel some flywheels will have a dowel pin that goes into one of these holes just kind of depends on your vehicle kind of want to get these started here Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take these out one by one, put a little bit of Loctite on them. I'm using Threadlocker Blue. Some guys will say you should use red. Some people don't use any of it. I think red is going to be really tough to service this in the future, try and get these apart. So I just use a little bit on there of blue. That way it Keeps it from vibrating out, but doesn't weld itself in there. <laughs> All right, so as the name applies, pressure plate applies pressure to the flywheel and the disc. So you want to make sure that this is centered in there so where you can get it in, pull it out, and it stays put. Slide it in without anything binding up. Nice and smooth. It's wanting to fall just a little bit. So as you tighten these bolts down these are going to go in you want to make sure that the clutch disc remains centered and doesn't drop see it's already dropped a little bit it's getting tough to push it in there so if i pull it up a little bit it makes a difference so i'm going to hold it up just a little bit and start running these down just until they bottom out meet your resistance you're not actually compressing the clutch at this point but again, you want to make sure that as you're doing this, you keep checking your tool to make sure that it doesn't get tight. 
All right, so now I shouldn't be able to move that clutch disc anywhere because I'm already starting to apply some light pressure to it. And I can, it doesn't take much to, to move it. So I'm just gonna leave that in there all the way. And then start tightening these down a little bit at a time until I get uh, until I get them all down evenly. Every once in a while you're checking but that's still free to go in and out. And the tool slides in and out easy so I know when I'm going to mount the transmission on here and I'm not going to have any trouble. Okay, and that's how the clutch goes on. Now that I got the clutch on there, let's go ahead and get it mounted on the uh, engine run stand. Got the bell housing cleaned up. This thing was caked in grease inside and out. Got about 99% of it out on the inside. Got it all off the outside. Um, just using a brake clean and a red scotch bright. Pretty much uh, did the trick. And uh, washed it off with some water. And uh, now what I'm going to do, is just because it's a little blotchy, I am going to give it just a light coat, cast coat, aluminum, engine enamel, DE1650. So I'm not going to paint, you know, inside and out and every little thing. I'm just going to actually going to tape this area off and then just give it a light coat, just to kind of give it more uniformity. So get rid of that uh, etched blotchiness looking colors on it. So, all right, let's see what it looks like. Let's tip it over. I'm not going to paint the bottom, but I do want to be able to see underneath what I'm doing here. Like right here. Get to it from underneath, so I'm getting it this way. Back inside here. There you go. Now I gotta let it dry before I can put it on the engine. Alrighty, let's go ahead and Got the bell housing on here. Get a bolt started. side needs to come up or that ad side needs to go down. Ah, perfect. And somehow that wound up perfectly flat. So <laughs> my up and down in the back, just kind of eyeballing it. On the money. Carburetors threw a kit in it and uh, got it cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the engine here. We've got this adapter plate here. I've been keeping this tape on here to keep uh, any gunk from falling in. Make sure I don't drop any of the tape in there. That kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> this Edelbrock Performer. 318 slash 360 manifold is a spread bore. I'm going with a square bore carburetor. So there's the gasket for the adapter plate here. It's got a vacuum port on the back if you want to hook up like a brake booster or something. Then you can go with your square bore gasket. And then just an extra cover here. Got us the crank pulley and the old water pump pulley. All right, I got the uh, crank pulley kind of loosely bolted on there, water pump pulley. Now looking at this, we have no alignment at all with the water pump and the alternator. Now this car had air conditioning at one time, 
and you can see it was a smog motor. Uh, the motor itself is actually an 86, so it's not even original to the car, but still in all, these pulley, this pulley setup is for AC and smog pump. Um, I had to go back and watch my old videos and teardown photos to see how they had this routed. So they had the alternator going straight to the pulley without hitting the water pump, um, which I guess is all fine and dandy, but it can't run the, the water pump without the power steering. So I don't want to hook up the power steering on the engine stand because I'm not going to have fluid and it's not going to go anywhere. So you got to figure out something else. I do have a couple other pulleys. I can try here. I got one here, but uh, it really doesn't line up with anything. Eh, this guy doesn't uh, line up either. And so I do have two more Chrysler crank pulleys. And that doesn't line up with that. All right, got it. So these two pulleys are off of the 70 Duster, uh, the 5.9 Magnum. Obviously these aren't Magnum pulleys, but it's a 318 or 360 rather. Um, I don't recall exactly where I got these uh, pulleys from. I think I got them off of another uh, LA 360. But it looks like these will work just fine. Um, I actually went through some of my old belts and I found a brand new one that, that fit perfectly. I think this is actually a spare for the 70 um, that I kept with me in my pit box when I go to the track just so I have a spare in case I throw a belt. Next up is headers and spark plugs. And I've got some headers here off of the uh, drag car also, just gonna be on loan for the wrench stand. I do have these uh, exhaust manifolds for the A-body. It uh, fits the no exhaust, it's already in the car, so I'm not gonna mess with that. Got the headers on. These headers have an O2 bung on there because I had an O2 sensor in the duster. Um, <laughs> happens to be the same thread pitch as a spark plug, so I just stuck that in there hole to plug it up. Um, I got the uh, three inch to two and a half inch reducer here. And I got the uh, starter motor in here. Spark plugs are tightened up, fuel lines connected. Next up is uh, I got to pull this guy out and um, put in a fitting so I can hook up my oil pressure line. So I got this uh, little kit here from, I guess, well, I got this from Summit, but see if I can even see the part number on there. So you don't have to buy the whole line kit if you just need the uh, the fitting. There it is, I think it was like eight bucks or something. Seems a little high for what you're getting, but everything's expensive nowadays. And it saves me a trip of uh, trying to track down all the pieces at the hardware store or the auto parts store, so. And it was delivered with everything else I needed. Carefully remove this thing. Little parts in the back. So basically how to hook these up. You slide uh, you slide this little guy over the over the end of the tube. Oh, then you take it off again. You slide this over the tube. Then you slide this little guy here. Ooh, and get it in there. Okay. And then you set it in there. And I like to kind of make sure it seats all the way in until it bottoms out. And then what happens is this right here, this little piece here, gets crushed and kind of squeezes the plastic and forms itself, shapes itself to to meet the mating surface on, on this little guy here. So it crushes them together. So this is actually a 3 8 You can kind of back it off and you can kind of feel the hose. You can feel it seat, so you want to make sure you seats all the way down. If you let go of it, it might pop up, so I just double check it. Now this stuff is really soft brass, so it doesn't take much to strip it out. You can see it's all coiled up here, all the extra tube that I don't need. I don't have a mechanical fan on these, because it's like obviously super dangerous. Um, so I have an electric fan on here. And I just uh, bolted the pulley to the pump. And you want to make sure that you don't put too long of bolts in here. Otherwise, it's going to smack into the, the pump casting and air cleaners. So, when you're trying to size an air cleaner for your car, different bases. You have drop bases, flat bases, tall bases, short bases, whatever. Um, this filter element came off the 70. You can see it's all crushed right there. Um, that's when I lost a motor mount and the engine 
uh, tilted over and uh, rammed this into the edge of the hood. <laughs> so different things to think about with the air cleaner. Some of them have a base like this. Some of them are sit taller. Some of them sit a little lower. So this one right here is nice because it's totally going to clear. It's going to clear everything. Just sits right on top like that. So depending on the make and model of your carburetor, you may need like something like this. But if you have a hood clearance issue and you don't want to go with a shorter filter, you can go with something like this. This is a drop base. So what this does, you put this on there. It actually lowers it down quite a bit. However, you need to make sure that your linkage and everything is going to clear. So I'm going to shorten this down, but before I do that, I'm going to check my spare parts box and see if I already have a shorter one. And then uh, we'll go from there. So I'm worried about hood clearance. So if I have enough hood clearance to put the, uh, the flat base on there, then I'll do that. And then I'll save this for when I actually need it. Uh, I think I have a drop base on the 67 Mustang too. Um, and I know I'm going to need one on the, um, when I go to Windsor, because it's a taller deck height, uh, and it's probably going to sit a little higher, so. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're getting there. There's a stainless steel braided vacuum hose that my dad made probably 40 years ago. Going through this, uh, random box of electrical car parts. I've got this, uh, stack of voltage regulators. Old school Mopar stuff here. This one's made in USA. Looks fairly new. Another one just like it. It's got some gunk stuck to the back of it. This one apparently came off the 70. This one here has got a little rusty on the outside, but I think I'm going to use this one. My dad left me a note. This one apparently is A-OK. -okay. So we're going to go ahead and go with that one. As far as ignition boxes, there's an original old school Chrysler one. A bunch of gunk stuck to the, well, sitting in the box. It's not leaking out, but other stuff was uh, sticking to it. There's another one made in USA. Man, this thing's like half the weight of that one. The Echlin. Don't know which ones work. This is a uh, Napa Echlin box. Maybe that one came out of this one, I don't know. This one looks brand new. Um, not sure which one I'm gonna use. But the, uh, the one that originally came off of the uh, 74. I also bought this kit, because I thought I was gonna need it. Came with a wiring harness and a brand new box. Part licensed. Yeah, so we're gonna hook one up and see if we can get uh, work in here. Found this pigtail in the box of harness for the uh, voltage regulator. Found this uh, pigtail for the uh, for the ignition box. So I'm gonna hang on to this. I'm not gonna use this one yet. I think I'm just gonna save this with the kit with this uh, new box here. Um, maybe actually install it onto the car itself. And then, uh, uh, remember that 400 I tore apart a few videos ago? Um, I kept the old wiring harness, and this is why, so I can save little things like this. This will plug into my distributor. So I just need to wire this to this, and then uh, plug it into one of these. I printed off the instructions from this kit right here on how to wire it. And then uh, there's my little simple diagram to wire up the voltage regulator. I just stole that off the internet, just copied it down onto my paper, so I got it all in one place. So there we go, let's get going. So once I get this thing up and running, not only can I uh, test the engine, you know, get it up to temperature, make sure it's not leaking, make sure I got oil pressure, all that good stuff. But I can also test all these other components, make sure the alternator is charging with each one of them, and uh, if they're bad, I'll junk them. If they're good, then I'll throw them back in the box. All right, it's time to prime the oil pump. One of the tricks I learned, you're wanting to know which way to turn it, point at the uh, 
vacuum canister and you know it goes that way there. So they go clockwise. Put this down in there. I want to get the uh, distributor back installed so I can put the plug wires in. So I want to make sure that the uh, rotor is pointed at number one. You can see the rotor points in the same direction as this tab that goes into the slot in the top of the uh, intermediate shaft. So I want to make sure that when I put my slot, or excuse me, when I put my intermediate shaft in, that the slot in there also winds up pointing straight ahead. Now this thing is naturally going to want to rotate counterclockwise here. When I put it in, so I'm going to put it in kind of more straight. Uh, this is pointing to number one ish. Just like that. And it is pointing more or less to number one. Let me just double check my crank. I believe I am at PDC, which I am. Perfect. So it could be pointing just that way a little bit more. But uh, if I move it over a tooth, it's going to be even more cockeyed. It's actually pointing to like number five. Ooh, pointing that general direction. All right. So when you plug your distributor in here, you want your rotor, just for reference, it really doesn't matter, but pointing in that same direction. Also, you want to keep in mind where your vacuum canister is. Make sure you have enough room to swing it around for your adjustment. Make sure it's not going to bump up against anything where you can't get a hose on your on the end there. Make sure it's not going to interfere with anything else. Not going to hit your firewall. However, if I put the put it like that, straight out this way, like this, number one. I'm gonna have plenty of room for everything. Let me go over this uh, setup we got here. We're almost ready to fire this up. Uh, we got the uh, batteries hooked up, obviously. We got uh, all the wiring mess. I did hook up the uh, voltage regulator, um, a Mopar voltage regulator for this alternator. Uh, I got the uh, Mopar electronic ignition hooked up. We are going to be using the mechanical pump. I just got it running over to a gas can there. So I am going through the ballast resistor. I got a full 12 volts uh, here and uh, it comes out here like around six and a half or so. Um, and then this wire here actually runs off of this post right here. That gives me a full 12 volts here only while cranking. As soon as I let off the key, uh, this goes dead. So that's how you wire that up. This goes from your ignition switch to activate these two, make that connection, and this one is there uh, full 12 volt hot while you're cranking. So that way you give full juice to the coil. So uh, we got the uh, just the plastic tubing here, but uh, for, oh yeah, this isn't hooked up. I have this loosened up to keep the choke open. Um, this is just kind of loosely tied off so it doesn't get caught in the fan belt or anything. Um, and I don't run these uh, plastic ones in the car, um, but on the engine stand, it's fine. If I get an oil leak, well, then I can just shut it down and I don't make a mess of the carpet. A quadruple check, my firing order, everything's in order there. Um, these really could use some angled boots or some shorter boots because these are really close to the header here. Um, but I got them kind of tied off. I just stuck this little thing on here to kind of hold them up out of the way. This distributor here is a brand new one from Cardone. Um, We'll see how well it works. Just electronic ignition stock style. That uh, Chrome Excel coil came with a car, so it was working, so I might as well use it. Uh, the carburetor is a 600 Holly. I just put a cheap kit in it. I uh, just cleaned it up. Um, we do have fuel. I did prime the bowls. So I do have accelerator pumpage. We've got a return spraying here. And we got a Wix filter on here. Pointing in the right direction, so I got the flow right. I got the bypass capped off here. The other water hose for the heater is actually being utilized. That hole for the uh, temperature sensor. The one for the vehicle is actually this little one right here. 
Got the ground cable going straight to the negative post on the battery. Just got some turbo mufflers on here to kind of quiet things down a little bit. Got the mini starter. This actually was on the uh, 70 Ford Duster. Um, the way I wire these, is when I'm using that Ford solenoid, just straight to this post, and then I have a jumper wire to activate it here. You can run a separate wire if you want to, but this works. I've been running it that way on the 70 Duster and having any issues, it works just fine. Got a little filter here. I'm gonna back this out of the garage here. Once I get the door open, I'll just fill it with water and, and then we'll fire her up. All right, I've got the uh, electric fan pulling through the radiator here, but I also have this uh, fan that I'm gonna be blowing that direction too. It's about ready. I have a valve cover. Yep, we've got a valve cover leak. That's to be expected with these stupid things. Actively dripping oil. <laughs> this side actually looks like it's sealed up on this side. Well, we finally got this little 318 up and running. Still needed to dial in the timing, adjust the carburetor, uh, do a couple little small things on it, but uh, she's a runner. Special thanks to Just Mopar Joe. Go check out his channel if you haven't already. I'll put a link down in the description below, or if I can figure out how to put that little bubble up in the top there to click on it, go to his video that shows how to set a distributor up uh, for initial fire. It was super helpful um, to make sure that your distributor and timing is spot on uh, for initial fire up so you're not searching around and being too retarded or too advanced or whatever. Um, it worked perfect. Um, so go, go over to that video um, and uh, it's a, a surefire method to get it uh, going the first time. So uh, thanks a lot, Joe. So thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this little video series on this little 318. Um, I need to get it back on with that Mustang so I can get that done so I can get the 74 done um, so I can get this car engine in the car. So uh, next up on the duster is to finish the paint job on the engine bay um, and the K-frame. Uh, suspension's all ready to go. There's a video series, on, well, I don't know if it's a series, but there's some videos on rebuilding suspension. I think there's two videos. So I'll do a third one when I do a final assembly. Um, so uh, go check those out if you haven't already. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. If you want to go ahead and send me an email, it's uh, roadhardrestorations at gmail.com. All right, thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.